Uh, one could say that by div uh, developing a bunch of proprietary technologies, NVIDIA is pushing the industry forward, but in some ways it's also kind of sabotaging it. Let's talk about Reflex. I think tech like this shouldn't be pro uh, proprietary. Its approaches should just be part of graphics APIs, and most games should be using it by default. Or am I missing something? It's a software thing, right? You have a video about Reflex, but it's still not clear what kind of magic it actually does. General terms like optimizing and reducing latency don't really explain the how and why this can't be just the standard for all games. It would be awesome if you made a deeper, more technical video about Reflex, maybe with some guest devs, because right now it's a total mystery to me. Um, mm -hmm. Alex, what does Reflex do and how does it work? So there is a great um, battle nonsense came out of hibernation at one point to do a <laughs> video about like when... Um, when uh, AMD tried to launch anti-lag and it uh, was messed up, and he explained very, very well in that video uh, how Reflex works and what makes it unique. And the thing that makes it unique is that it's doing like a whole bunch of things at once. One thing, it's capping the frame rate below your monitor's full refresh rate so that it never goes into VSync and then frame queuing, which occurs with VSync because it's the GPU is going to keep working behind the scene and queuing up frames, uh, which increases input latency right when you get into VSync territory, which is at the max refresh rate of your monitor. And so it prevents that. Then it also reduces the amount of frames that are being queued in general to just basically be like one. So it's like double buffering almost in that aspect. Uh, but it's basically just reducing as much on the engine side as possible by reducing the amount of max frames that can be queued up. That's something you could technically do beforehand in your in your in your um, control panel, uh, at least on the Nvidia side. And then AMD eventually added it as well too, with this like um, I forget what they call it. They have these new names for it. It's like Auto <laughs> Low Latency Plus or yep. something. Mm -hmm. um, it used to just be like a max queued frame option. But that, that technically can cause issues in games, by the way. It can make your frame times more erratic, just so you know. That is not like a, something that is just only good. Um, that's one thing Reflex does, though. And another thing that it does is it tries to prevent uh, your GPU from reaching max utilization. The reason for this is because, and it's a little bit confusing, but there's like a back pressure component to having the GPU being completely utilized. It'll actually increase latency if it is. So it wants to also keep your GPU from maxing out. And in which case, if it is below the refresh rate of your monitor, it will automatically reduce your frame rate below max utilization in your GPU. So your GPU will be sitting maybe around 90 to 96% instead of being full 99 or 100. And it's doing these combination of things in real time to make sure like the automatic um, GPU utilization frame rate limiting is actually probably the magic sauce of Reflex, which makes it feel so good. Uh, and that is the one thing that is proprietary more than the other technologies. Uh, AMD had to come up with their own solution for that. I still haven't looked at Anti-Lag 2. It deserves a look from us in a latency piece. Um, but I presume it's going to be trying to do something very similar, which is the whole purpose of it. Otherwise, why would they make it? Um, but that is something that is proprietary. And arguably, though, I agree with you. I don't think it should be proprietary. I think DirectX needs to not be so slow. And <laughs> it's just like, it's like a snowy landscape. It is constantly like little, little bits are moving here and there, but it's like not advancing too much over time. The landscape looks very similar. Right. DirectX okay. feels like that a lot. And, you know, these are things when Reflex came out, Microsoft should have really, I mean, maybe they did. They should have been like, wow, uh, you came up with an API to make it so that developers can easily reduce the latency in their game with a single click option. This should be part of DirectX. And I really think it should. And I think that's a, with a lot of NVIDIA innovations. Maybe they're keeping it on to, for themselves because they want this proprietary money machine, essentially. But also, I feel like at that point, it should be really the like klaxons should be going off at microsoft hey we need to really push forward on our side on the api side to make a generic version of this then through our own research because man it's like right now we're only getting cooperative vector support like maybe at the like tail end of this year i guess which is machine learning directly used in the graphics api mm -hmm. 2025 
NVIDIA was yeah. already doing this in 2018, right? Like, it's like crazy the time scale lag there. Um, so, yeah, uh, I do agree with you fully, though, that I really wish things like Reflex were just straight up DirectX um, and not tied to NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. Oliver, what do you make of this? I mean, it is basically <laughs> somebody's got to drive standards forward, right? And it does yeah. seem to be used as a point of differentiation to sell GPUs, which is kind of like normal. But at the same yeah. time, you do want to see DirectX improving. I'm happy if NVIDIA is pushing the state of graphics technology forward. I just want Microsoft to be following them closely with various DirectX features and API support and all that good stuff. Um, I think what mm -hmm. we've seen out of Reflex and Reflex 2 is also quite interesting as well. It doesn't really have any competing solution at the moment, but both those solutions are really, really compelling for reducing uh, input latencies in games. Yeah, I'd love it if there was some vendor agnostic solution here. But unfortunately, that doesn't really seem to be the case. And I think Alex was a little bit exasperated with like the uh, influx of new technologies that were shown at CES and the inevitable waiting for uh, Microsoft to provide some kind of vendor agnostic solution that would allow people to to run those technologies. I think we might be waiting quite a while for some of that stuff. Oh, yeah, mm. definitely. Do you think that Microsoft needs some, <laughs> some of its own project amethyst style collaboration? <laughs> To, to basically yeah. ensure that the industry keeps up with the custom stuff that NVIDIA is doing. Yeah, I would love that. And it's it's going to be so ironic when all these uh, <laughs> Microsoft next-gen titles come out with FSR4 on them, which is like a Sony thing, um, <laughs> you know, uh, at that point, or whatever it's going to be called. Maybe they'll have a different name for it. Uh, within their SDK. But uh, yeah, I, I really wish they would do that because it just always feels, I, I know they have to be this like middle person in between the IHVs and they all have their own view of the future. But sometimes it's been like, mm, you know, like one per the NVIDIA has been pushing for so long in the direction where it obviously needs to go. And now we're seeing this direction, finally this kick up from AMD, but the APIs are still behind. In a long, you know, in a lot of ways. So, I don't know. Yeah, you're right, okay. Albert. <laughs> I was a little bit frustrated at, at CES when I was like, "Man, this is this is amazing tech. When's it coming to DirectX?" I, I think mm. I asked that a couple times. Yeah.